the power of the blessing because if you don't understand what we're about doing it will not make difference to you now genesis chapter 27 1 to 4 now i read the bible says and it came to pass that when isaac was old please follow this and his eyes were dim so that he could not see he called Esau his eldest, eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here I am. Here am I. Verse 2. And he said, Behold now, I am old. And I know not the day of my death. Nobody knows the day of his death. Now therefore, think I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field. And take me some venison. Hmm. Verse 4. And make me savour meat. Such as I love. And bring it to me. That I may eat. I love these words. That my soul may bless thee. That's what we call blessing from the soul. And blessing on the lips. I told you one yesterday that when I, I, I was with uh, uh, Reverend Pierre for what? He gave me an offering. I didn't like it because I don't collect money from anybody that's senior me in ministry. So I got to my, told my wife, can you see what I saw? My wife said, why did you collect it? She was angry. No, 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 no. I said, okay. So I, 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 Packaged times three of the money and added to it to make it a land figure. When I knelt down, I just got to Baba Wa's office. He finished preaching and I entered. I said, Daddy, he just him over last. Efu me ni owo. Me ude like it. Mu she saw none. Muni me ude like it. Tori, one call me back in Baba Wa lo wo. Eni to ju me lo. Inu share on share. Tori e. Mu wa mu ore e wa funi. He shook his body. That's blessing of soul. He shook him, said, Ah, Kule. He took the oil. He put it on his head. He now brought it to my head. He, now, there's what we call blessing of the soul. It goes beyond the mouth. Now, and if you look at this scripture we read, I want you to see something. Esau now went to the field to look for something that the father will love. But because, listen, Rebekah and Jacob understood the power of the blessing. Rebekah called the son. I know this thing that my husband wants to put upon your brother. We must do everything possible to make sure we take it. Jacob said, what if my father discover and curse me? He said, let the curse come upon me. But this thing, I, I, I prefer to be cursed for you to have it than not to be cursed at all for you to lose it. Now, I want you to understand that the, this Rebecca understands, she had a proper understanding of what the blessing is. Then Jacob too agreed. We, because Jacob understood that, see, it is not your work that makes the difference in your life. It is not the people you are connected to that makes the difference in your life. What makes the difference in the life of any man is the level of blessing upon his head. So Rebecca quickly went to the kitchen to prepare something. Isaac, uh, uh, Jacob pretended to be Esau, dressed like Esau, and make sure he took the blessing. The Bible says, as he left, his brother came in. The brother said, the father said, I've blessed. Oh, it's Jacob. He wept. Why was he weeping? He too was weeping because he knows that success is not by power or by might. That there is something, there is something. There's something beyond it. He wept. He now asked his father, just like what Brother Francis said, Daddy, Daddy, is that all? Don't you have any other blessing again? 
The father said, I have one that I will give you. Now, but let's look at, let's focus on Jacob now. He has talked about Esau. The Oxford Dictionary calls the blessing, hear me, the pronouncement that invokes divine assistance. Now, that's what Oxford Dictionary says. It's a pronouncement that makes something that nobody can explain to be working for you. Now, and you know that the authors of Oxford Dictionary, they are not Christians. They are ordinary people. So they don't know how to say God. They don't know, they don't, but they just believe that anyone that that blessing is pronounced on, something will be working for that person. I'm praying for you today that you move from the realm of ordinary men. You begin to operate in the realm of blessed men. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the blessings, doors will open for you. I go again. A pronouncement that makes something beyond natural to be working. That's the blessing. It makes something that is beyond natural. Now, I'm sorry to say this, but permit me to say it. You know, I told us when I was teaching about on leadership about three months ago or four months ago, I was I took Ashiwaju Bola Metinumbu as my case study. I told you at the leadership meeting. In the first service that that man will win the election people were asking me sir how, what do you think i said look at that man he has touched life something is working for him that is not natural something is working for him that is not natural i explained that day now how did he get there today he didn't get there by eloquence he didn't get there by strength even the northerners don't know the reason why they are working for him. That's the power of the blessing. I took time to study him. He has served several leaders loyally. Now, let's go for that. I will show you three examples of blessed people. Three examples of blessed people. Exodus 1, 8 to 12. Let's see it on screen. In Exodus chapter 1 from verse 8 to verse 12, the Bible says there's this Pharaoh that came that didn't know Joseph. The Bible says he now started to afflict. Look at it. Now, there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Move on, we don't have all the time. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass, that when they are for let out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so they, and so get them up out of the land. Verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, pitoms, and ram, 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 ramses. But the more they afflicted them, what do you see? Because something was working. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. The, the, more, they, the, the more they were afflicting, the people could not explain. These people are just growing. We are punishing them, they are growing. We are making life difficult for them, they are growing. When you carry the blessing, sir, when you carry the blessing, the economy can't stop you. The land where you are can't stop you. I remember the day I got an encounter. I had several encounters. I can begin to mention one. Other, but there was this particular one that made a difference in my life. It, the man of God is late now. He's Apostle Moses Grandio. And I was following that time. Bishop Niboro invited him. A program. So the man of God came. He finished preaching. I was part of the protocol team. He finished preaching around 11.30 p.m. So Reverend Nibolo said, Pastor Prince will be among the team. I will take him to his hotel. I didn't have cow. I followed the protocol team. We took him to his hotel at Dirovans. Then, getting to Dirovans, you know, protocol arrangement, I cannot go except the man of God says, I'm released. So I sat at the reception. When they finished discussing in the hotel room, Bishop Nibolo was coming out. He said, Pastor Prince, you are still here. I said, yes, sir. He said, this man of God need to pray for you. He now took me inside. He told the man of God, he said, this is my son. 
I told him to be part of the political team, but I didn't know that he will wait till now. He has been waiting on you. The man of God, Apostle Moses Grandion, was putting on boxers and singlet. He looked at me. He looked at me. He just came to me like this, put his two hands upon my head and said, You are blessed! Instantly, I felt that something fell upon me. I didn't fall down. He didn't say more than that. I stood up. Lo and behold, got out of the hotel. Bishop Nimboro waved to me. Bye bye. I was trekking from Dilovans around to 2 a.m. I live here that time. And I was just speaking in tongues at the middle of the road. And I was shouting, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I noticed that from that time, everything about my life changed. The blessing is a pronouncement that provokes what? Divine assistance. Look at another example. In Daniel chapter 1, there's no time to read. From verse 1 to verse 15, the Bible says they gave them food to eat from the king's table. Daniel said, I won't eat. He said, put me on vegetable and water. Others were eating king's food. And the Bible says they tested them for a few days. After the few days of test, they brought Daniel and his brothers out. They brought those that have been eating from the king's table out. The Bible says they checked them and they discovered that Daniel and his friends were fairer, better in appearance than those that were eating from the king's table. What's that? It's the blessing. It makes a difference. The third example I'm showing you because of my time is in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1. The blessing upon Noah Let's read it. Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Do you know that it was by one family that all the earth came? The question should be, how did colors change? You know, we are black in Africa. Some people are brown. Some people are white. But because this family is blessed, the Bible says they, they multiply and replenish. They fill their whole heart because of the power of the blessing that was placed upon them. Now, I now brought today that I want us to look at the life of Jacob. His father gave him eight things. And I'm led to give you those eight things. Let's look at it one after the other. Genesis 27, from verse 27 to 30. There are eight blessings. I read. And he came there and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his remnant. And blessed him and said, what's the blessing? See the smell of my son. It's as the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. What is that? He gave him favor. He says, see the smell of my son. You know, if your smell is bad, people run away from you. He says, see the smell of my son. It's like the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. The first blessing that he placed upon Jacob was favor. And I always tell people, if you carry favor, no door will be closed against you. If you carry favor, no door will be closed against you. Stretch forth your hands and open your feet. I speak as your father in the Lord. I decree as king's men of this church, from today, carry favor in the name of Jesus. Amen. May your smell be as the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Open your eyes. That's the first one. Say, I carry favor from now. That's why everywhere Jacob entered, Jacob was never denied. Then he gave him the second one. In verse 28 B. Therefore God gave, look at this, therefore God give thee of the dews of heaven. Hmm. The dews of heaven represents supernatural provision. Supernatural provision. If everything about you is explainable, you are not enjoying the supernatural supernatural provision that's the second thing the deals of heaven you will see that in the white garments they didn't understand it they will say 
put a cup, put a bowl, put it outside. Take the water that is in the morning. They say, go and bathe with it. That's not the blessing. They are just doing the natural thing. You know what the father said? He pronounced it. I give you, I bless you with the blessings of the dews of heaven. Which means the heavens will support you. Now permit me to give you the second one now. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. May the Lord God give you the dews of heaven in the name of Jesus. From today, begin to enjoy supernatural assistance. Where the help of man is cast, the help of God shall be available to you. And because this help will be available, you will not be stranded. I speak, you will not be stranded. I speak, you will not be stranded. Men, you will not be stranded. In the name of Jesus. Then he gave him the third one. That's in 28b. Ah. He said, the, the fatness of the earth and the plenty of wine is yours. Now, what does the fatness of the earth represent? It represents the best things of the earth. You know what his father gave me? He said, I give you the best things of the earth. The best things on earth. I was listening to Pastor Tunde Bakari a few days ago. And he was preaching. He was preaching to his partners. And he was asking them, he said, I want to pray for you. Do you think God cannot do what I'm going to tell you to do for you? Do you think God is not, is, is an, you think God is an irresponsible father? The people said no. So he called his children, his biological children, told them to stand in front. He said, when I relocated you from Lagos to, to live in UK, were you stranded by any way? Did your standard of living drop? They said no. He said, he said, when we moved from UK, I relocated you to US. We lived in US for some years. Did your standard of living drop? They said, no. When we now said, I said to them, let's come back to Nigeria now. Did your standard of living drop? They said, no. He said, if an ordinary man can be that responsible. Do you think your heavenly father will not do more? That word touched me. And he said something, he said, I have always lived as a king all my life. Not on the pulse of any man, but on my revelation. He said, ever before I became a pastor, I have always lived as a king. Some of you, all you know is the backside of life. But I put the blessing of God upon you today. The fatness of the earth shall be yours. Amen. Begin to take possession of the best place, the best things of the earth in the name of Jesus. I decree when they talk about the best things of the earth, your name will not be exempted. I say your name will not be exempted. Begin to enjoy the fatness of the earth. Begin to enjoy the plenty of corn. Begin to enjoy the plenty of wine. Enjoy abundance in the name of Jesus. Then look at the third blessing. Okay, the fourth one. That's in Genesis 29. It says, let people serve thee. Hmm. Now, which means it's an open door to the top. Any organization where you work, you will move from whatever position you are, you've, you've, uh, that they welcome you into, you are moving to the top. I declare the headship anointing. If for Rory or Lati, the Lori, may it fall upon you now in the name of Jesus. I say men will serve you. Move from servant to leadership in the name of Jesus. Move from the bottom to the top. I command the door that leads to the top to begin to open for you. I say may it begin to open for you. Whatever power that has locked you at that level, I command them destroyed now. In the name of Jesus, begin to ascend. Go to the top. Go to the top. In your business, go to the top. In your profession, go to, your, to the top. In every aspect of life, go to the top. In the name of Jesus. Now open your eyes. We are still there in that number four. Hear me. 
Hear me and hear me well. Stop running away from leadership. I told my children last year, I said one thing I noticed about my biological father is this. My biological father has always dodged leadership. Anytime they want to put him, my father will recommend somebody. Anytime they want to put him at the top, even in the military, he will recommend somebody. I now saw the same thing in my life. Some group association came to say, Pastor Prince, we want you to be the head of, our of this association. I said, no, I have somebody. The same thing my dad used to do. I gave them the name of the person. I now told my children, I said, see, when my dad died, the commandant of Nigerian Legion came. He said, Pastor Fulabi, I've always known your dad as a faithful and worthy assistant all his life. Even when he was serving in the army, he always desired the position of number two. And he will serve anybody that is number one with an undivided loyalty. Make sure you could continue. I remember that word and I began to reject it. And I told my children, I told them, when you get to school, whatever association that is there, aim for the top. Don't get into school and come out unknown. That most of these people you see ruling Nigeria today, most of them, it was decided from university levels. So I told Eniola, you know what, you must... So she, she came up, she contested for a position. She didn't win. She was crying. I said, no, it's not the first day you contest that is a guarantee you will win. Try it again next year. So I decree. Because if you don't have a desire and, as I'm praying, it will not work. The door that leads to the top in that organization, the door that leads to the top in that field, in that business opens for you in the name of Jesus. I say men shall serve you. You didn't hear me? Men shall serve you in the name of Jesus. Men shall serve you in the name of Jesus. He didn't stop there. He said and nations shall bow down to thee. I wrote it here this way. <laughs> For nations to bow down, it means that your influence shall grow beyond one nation. It means your influence shall do what? Shall grow beyond one nation. I speak prophetically to you right now. Begin to receive the intercontinental, international grace of open doors in the name of Jesus. You will succeed not only in Nigeria you will succeed all over the world. The noise of your success will open doors for you in other nations. In the name of Jesus, I command borders to open for you. But embassies will not deny you. In the name of Jesus, men of God's five angelic commission, I speak prophetically. The Bible says by the prophesying of the prophet, the people prosper. By my prophesying now, begin to prosper international influence rest upon you now international influence rest upon you now begin to open doors doors are opening for you 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 so it is in jesus name we pray under it again he now said be lord over thy brethren that's number six Let thy mother's sons serve sons bow down to thee. Now, which means it is wrong to be great outside and become a nobody in the family. You know, there are people like that. They are great outside, but when they come to the family, they don't even see them as anything. Let me speak this one to you. I hope your younger ones are not here. And I hope your elder ones are not here. I speak prophetically to you the anointing of God that will make your brothers your sisters ha 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 to see your greatness come and respect it that will make you greater than they I command that anointing to rest upon you now in the name of Jesus your greatness shall be known in your father's house your greatness shall be known in your mother's house 
Your father's family shall respect you. Your mother's family shall respect you. You shall not be a mockery in that family. You shall be a glory. So it is. In the name of Jesus. Then look at number seven. And it came to pass in verse 30. No, we're, we're not in verse 30. We're still in 29C. It says, curse be everyone that cursed thee. Look at that. Anyone that cursed thee. Now, that's another blessing that was placed upon Jacob. Which means anyone that fights them is in trouble. It's a blessing. Jacob didn't need to fight. He was about It was a blessing that was placed upon him. And it happened like that. People that were fighting them were having problems. I decree from today, anyone that fights you shall experience terror in the name of Jesus. Anyone that fights you shall experience trouble in the name of Jesus. Whoever curses you is cursed. Anyone that tries to curse you is cursed in the name of Jesus. No one will succeed to fight you and win. Anyone that tries to fight you shall fall before you. Amen. Then the last one that he gave him. The last part of that 29. He said, blessed be he that blessed thee. I wrote it down like this. Whoever thinks or talk well of thee shall enjoy favor because of him. Now which means, let people be saying, I don't know this kind of person. If I bless him, I'm blessed. Everybody that has worked with us, in, go and ask my wife, he will tell you. Ask all the people. Koje Kapenta Lua Shishe. Ukonje Ke Oman Pawalarani. Tomatik Bashe Lua Wabai. Or Notuti Tifunashi. Or Wani Shishe Tiwa. All the people that has worked with us, they will be telling us, Pastor, Ukoshe Yu King Po. Botabati Bubu Lua Yibai. And when he shed, and when customer at you, Ronti Wari, Wakan Bess, Niranti. One day I had to tell my wife, are you sure we are not going to stop this thing? Even staff, when we employ staff to come and work with us, I remember one of our daughters that time, she was trusting God for a job. She said she, she prayed and God said, go and work with them. Koti, she shared two, four months. She got a job with bank. It was after she left that your wife came to work with us. He said, Papa, I want to work with people too. She didn't work up to four months too before she got the job that she's in up to now. I put this blessing upon you. Whoever does business with you, whoever works with you, shall prosper for your sake in the name of Jesus. Whoever thinks well of you shall prosper. And it over there, Bishop, for to lock quotation, wa or no one need D. Anyone as you share, we prosper. Amen. These are the eight blessings, and I decree that these eight blessings begin to function in your life from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, look up. I have three more things to tell you. What makes the blessing to be active upon people? Because you can carry the blessing. And it will not work. There are three things you need to do after you carry the blessing. What's number one? Gladden your heart. Be happy in your heart that you have the blessing. Always see yourself as a blessed person. Don't wait for the manifestation first. As Jacob carried it, he jumped up and went, Mommy, I've collected it. Mommy, I've collected it. Mommy, I've collected it. As Hannah received it from the mouth of Eli, she jumped up. She Bible says she, he went to the place and the, the people and started eating and drinking. I, see, as, I always carry myself as a blessed fellow. Let your heart always be glad from now that you are different. And I always tell people, see, what others suffer, me, I cannot suffer because I carry the blessing. What do you carry? Blessing. I didn't hear you. Shout it aloud. So treasure it. See yourself that way. A woman doesn't need to see as a man. She sees herself as a woman because she knows she's a woman. A blessed person doesn't need to struggle with curse. 
When people are saying, ah, people, a good event when you come down, a blessed person will say, me, I'm different. A me, a me. Ask my pastor friends, they will tell you. I always say that, me, pastor Prince, you, lie, lie, I can't stop. Me? In this Ibadan? Anywhere? I can't stop. Carry yourself like that. Number two. Be willing to take positive risk. Jacob was not willing. Listen, Jacob was willing to explore on familiar grounds. When the mother said, "You know, now that your your brother, your brother knows that you have carried the blessing, but you have traveled to so so and so place," Jacob was not afraid to travel. If you carry the blessing, and that you, and you are not willing to take unfamiliar positive risk, hear me, you are wasting it. It's like you have money in your pocket and you are not investing it. Go and begin to do great things. Those things you have in your mind, go and start. How will I accomplish this? Sir? You accomplish it by the power of the blessing. Don't stay where you are, the same thing you are doing. Don't stay, don't stay there. I told you, and I've been telling you, when we moved, when I moved to that level assignment to go and start the school, it was me and my wife that prayed in the room and we agreed. If we can do it at liberty, we can do it at, we are blessed. Now come there, come and see students. The school is flourishing on its own. We have teachers, we have HM, now I don't need to sit down there anymore. Because of the power of the blessing. I'm already thinking of another assignment now. Don't be afraid of, of unfamiliar grounds. Because some of you are saying, I'm not used to it. I'm not. If a business idea cross your mind, please start taking steps. I took my son to go and do an exam somewhere. When I got to the school, now because of his color, I wanted him to be in a mix of whites like him. People were coming to contest. Everybody was coming to contest. I told myself, he's my son. So I prayed for him when he was going for wisdom. When we got his admission, they sent it to us on, on phone. Congratulations, your son has gained admission to our school. We'll be waiting for you to come and receive your, his admission kits. I was glad. Why? We are trying on familiar grounds. Some of us are too used to one pattern. A child of God, you have multiple streams. When Jacob got to Potiphar's, uh, uh, Liban's house, he never worked as a slave before. He walked. And look at when he was coming out. How did he come out? He couldn't work with one group. The Bible says, his properties and family were divided into three groups. You know what I'm men mentioning this one? Some of you, you are too, you are too fearful. That company crossing your mind now. You don't need money to start any vision. What you need to start every vision is the blessing. And once you have the blessing, take your long step out. Take step. Jacob didn't say, Mommy, I can't go. I've not gone out of my father's house before. Take steps. You will see God do exploits in your life. And what's the last one? The third thing you must do to activate the blessing. Continue to sow seed towards your blessing. Every opportunity you have to sow seed, continue doing it. Seed sowing is not something you do once and stop. When my mentor was to celebrate his 60th, hear me, I'm closing with this. Let me start with his 50th year birthday. They held a meeting. I was not there, not my mentor. He didn't hear about the meeting. Some ministers of God in the, in the group that I belong, we held a meeting. Let's make his birthday glorious. He said, pastors should give certain amount. So one of them said, let's nominate people that can give 50,000. I was not there. He said, Pastor Prince will. That's 10 years ago. Put his name among those that will give 50,000. 
So they called me. He called me and said, Pastor, I put your name among those that will give 50,000 for our mentor's birthday. I got angry. 50,000. Because 50,000 naira at that time, sir, 10 years ago, Emigon Ubali. But I didn't know that the level you want to enter, if you, you sow into it. So in angry, I said to in anger, I said to the man, don't mention my name. Ah, what is I've written your name? But something else said to me, don't argue again. Look for it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma. It affected my children's school fees. That, that time, my children could not stay in school. The check I gave bounced. Because I was expecting certain money, didn't enter. So I gave that 50000 Do you know that that was the, that year, one of us wanted to celebrate his birthday. So I prayed for him. And he said, uh, uh, sir, this is my seed for you to bless me. When I opened the envelope, it was a check of 50000 Mulemi no mati by 50,000. Which means, whatever you can't give, you can't receive. So this year, is to celebrate 60. I now said to myself, I will give 200. But the cashless affected me seriously. I managed and managed, I gathered 100,000. Because I've never received a seed of 100,000 era from a person before. So I transferred it. When the, the, the person in charge said, Pastor, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm giving 100,000. When my wife and children had 100,000, he said, Daddy, eh, you have not balanced uh, 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 and your last uh, school fees. I said, forget that one. What will make me balance it will happen. And they know that when I say forget, they don't talk about it again. So I said, did you send away? I was shocked that when I saw what you wrote here, it's what I gave. Which means God has moved me from that level too. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let giving be your lifestyle. You will see doors opening. Don't wait. Now, you know why you are sowing seed constantly? It's like you, you are watering your seed. You are watering the ground. You are watering your, your blessing your, for, for more manifestation. Don't wait. Yes, some people will say, eh, oh, wait, so wait. they don't understand. Giving is a mystery. Let me close so that you can go back to your place of work. I want to speak two words, two sentences to your life. The you that came to this meeting. <laughs> As you leave this hall now, a new you that will not be denied of favor, that will be celebrated wherever he enters, comes upon you now. In the name of Jesus! That new you we go and begin to do exploit. I said that new you we begin to do great things. This season of struggling in your life is over. In the name of Jesus. The second word I'm speaking. It was Hannah's testimony. He said he took me from the dust. And make me to seek, sit among princes. I'm declaring now a change. Complete change. Positively. In your level from now. In the name of Jesus. Enter into the realm of mega prophets 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 i hear in my spirit now that there's somebody here there's a curse in your father's house that has been affecting your life i have this living to speak against that curse and to command it to stop that curse operating in your father's house i don't know you that's operating in your life I command it to end now. In the name of Jesus. Enter into a new blessing. Enter into a new blessing. Begin to flow in a blessing. No more curse in your father's house. In the name of Jesus. You become the new generation blessing. You are blessed. 
you are favored and you are honored. Your doors are open. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And if, thank you for your seed. It is accepted with thanksgiving. We appreciate it. The Lord bless you.